Welcome to Glycon. Glycon is a mocap system that allows you to perform motion capture and get motion capture from just VR equipment. You just put on your hand trackers and your headset and you're good to go. Um, I wanted to tell you about this video today. It's actually broken into two parts. The first part is for new users uh, and anyone coming into Glycon for the first time. And it's really brief. I'm just going to show you if you're using Glycon in Steam VR, you're going to see uh, a little bit of weirdness when you first come in and that's okay. And this video is just going to show you how to deal with that, how to set it up. It just takes a few minutes and you're done. Once you've done it the first time, every time after that, it's a, it's a cinch. The rest of the video is all the cool new stuff in the latest version. And the latest version is basically a combination of extreme performance improvements and tons of bug fixes. I've taken every bug fix I could, every bug report I could find, and I believe I've fixed pretty much everything. So... Please take a look at this latest version. Let me know what you think. Feel free to comment in the comments below, etc. And I uh, hope you have a great day. Okay, when you first come into Glycon, one of the first things you'll notice, a few things you'll notice, one is that your hands are wrong. And you can see that you are very small and over on the corner. And uh, that's not right. So the reason that I'm very small and over on the corner is because Steam VR is not configured to match the meta environment. So the first thing you want to do is this. Now I should be able to record this in my headset, so I'm going to hopefully switch. switch now the video to the headset. Click the lower left button on the controller and then switch over here to click over here to recenter. And when you do that, you'll get this thing. Look forward, recenter. Now, now you'll notice I am mediumish height in the middle. Uh, there are a few reasons for that. So number one is I'm sitting down. I need to stand up. And then number two, I need to recalibrate the uh, recalibrate Glycon. So we're just going to stand up here, push the bottom two buttons, and then match my hands to what I see the character doing. And I'm going to do this a few times until I'm pretty happy with how that looks. When I move my hands around and it feels like I've got my hands in roughly the right positions, that's right. Now I'm going to move the joysticks around and make sure the fingers articulate, and they do. And so basically at this point, we're ready to, to rock. So the latest version of Glycon is mostly bug fixes. Um, there was some discussion in the forums uh, in the Discord about uh, some of the remaining issues in Glycon, and I wanted to address some of those. And actually, I wanted to address all of them. So this version has a ton of bug fixes in it. Uh, and I want to go over there real quick. So there's a really big thing that I keep forgetting about because I've been using this version for a while, and that is that there's a massive speed increase in this version. Uh, in the latest version of Glycon, inside the app itself, you'll notice that motions are smoother and, and less uh, jittery. Uh, you'll notice that the, the edges of things are crisper, the text is sharper, uh, and generally everything is just faster and better. So that's a a huge one, and I don't even know what to call it. Just a general quality of life, massive improvement. So starting in this next version, the shipping version is the demo version. It's the same product. The only difference is that until you unlock it, it will have this thing that says this is the demo version. You can't save animations. But after you buy a license, you will go to the members only section of the website, grab the registration code for this version, and that unlocks Glycon. So everything will be in the same exact position and work exactly the same between the demo version and the full version. Okay, so I've just entered my password and now I am, um, that, that screen's no longer up there. That means I am free to record and I'm gonna record something and I wanna show you some cool stuff that we got in this latest version. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to click first on target platform. I'm going to pick one. Actually, these all of these have been pretty well tested now. I have some questions about 3ds Max. If you're a 3ds Max user, uh, let me know. But the rest of these actually should work. Uh, Daz only works with Genesis 8. I'm adding Genesis 9 very soon. And iClone should work with the latest version of iClone. Blender should work with the latest version of Auto Rig Pro. And Unity Mixamo, of course, will work with that stuff. Unreal will work with everything except uh, the meta, uh, meta humans. I'm still working on a really good meta human thing. If you can use the mannequin, though, if you, you can retarget the mannequin to meta human, and that works real well there, too. Uh, so we're going to do this real quick. I'm, I'm going to record something. So you see me over here on the side. I'm just going to record. Actually, I'm going to uh, switch the view real quick. 
display. We're going to switch to a different camera. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, the mirror. We'll do this one. Okay. So here, I can now record uh, something. And I'm going to click the top button on my controller. Oh, you know what? Actually, let's do this as third person so you can see this. When I click the top button on my controller, up here on the screen, it's going to go three, two, one. And it's going to start recording. Okay. So uh, now I'm recording and whatever I record, that's what I'm going to record. So if I, you know, want to, I don't, I don't know if I record something, right? So then I hit the button again to stop recording. Now, this is really cool. As soon as I stop recording, it's going to export. That's what it did before. But, but check this out. Uh, let me see. There it is. Uh, we now have, if I go to, if I go to frame rate, I can actually choose the frame rate I want. I notice down here when I recorded it, it said what the frame rate was. FBX, 30 frames per second, building this for Unity Mixamo, all right? So if we go look at target platform, we'll see that Unity Mixamo is selected. And we look at frame rate, we'll see 30 frames per second selected. And we go to format, we're doing FBX, okay? So it's all right there in the, in the, in the HUD now, I mean on the menu, uh, mirror, that's what it is. But let's go to frame rate. Here's the cool thing. I can actually now choose a different frame rate. So if I actually wanted to record this, uh, if I want to see what it looks like as 60 frames per second, I can just export it again. Takes a second. And then if I want to do this as 24 frames per second, I can do it again. It's going to take the same animation and dump it out as different frame rates. Uh, this should be timed properly, and it should actually work in all of the programs. I've been testing the hell out of this. Uh, there were some issues before. I really appreciate people bringing this up in the Discord. Um, I, I apologize if it seemed like I was dismissive of this earlier. What can I say? Uh, I feel like this is something the, the, the platforms should be supporting better, but I am supporting it correctly for every one of the platforms now in the different uh, export formats for that platform. So there you go. This should work really well in all the different things. So then in files, here are all the files you've, we've recorded. We can send those to, uh, to, to Studio if we want to. Now, up here you'll notice, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this more in the future here, but up here it says recordings are stored on this device. You can access them by going to a particular folder, or by, and if you click this button here, it's going to take you to the documentation. I'm trying to update the documentation right now for every single thing in here. And as I finish those, I'm going to add a little button somewhere in each, in each of this, the menus that takes you to the documentation for that feature and explains it in great detail. Uh, I apologize for not having done that earlier. That was an obvious uh, thing I should have done better. And let's see what else we have. So cue cards, got a little bit of an update, update, not much, but as you can see, I've got some cue cards up here. If I switch to a different camera, well, if I switch to my view, you can see it really well. Um, as I'm talking, I can look around and I can see my cue cards. And I can see the notes. And and those are basically notes you can leave. You can, you, you, you put them in a special folder in, uh, and then Glycon catches them and turns them into cue cards. And you can actually um, click and resize them and move them real close to you if you want. Uh, or, you know, move them farther away so they're gigantic or small. Whatever you want. You can just move them around. It's a, it's a, it's a cool feature um, to let you, you know, if you're trying to remember exactly what it is you're trying to record. Okay, switching back to a different view. All of these menus are updated and tested and should be working great like audio works really well if you go pick up um uh an audio clip and you hit play Open i don't know if you can hear that you can you hear it. you can also record if you click this button here as you record your video when you're done it will dump out a, a wave file for that recording props you can load your own props the arena, um, oh, we've got some really cool stuff coming out, coming out for the arena. One of the things is I want to point out on pass through, if you're using an Oculus Quest and you're not in Steam, this means you're on the Oculus desktop or Meta desktop, uh, you can toggle pass through and now you can also turn off the mirror. So when you do that, you don't have the mirror up there. You can do that also if you're in Steam also for that matter, but uh, it's just a kind of a convenience thing because if you're using pass through and you're looking at your room, you don't want to see the mirror. Um, virtual sets got a little bit of an update. Uh, legs got a little bit of an update. 
Uh, let's see, anchors again got an update. Hands and gestures. Fingers do not work in Steam VR yet, but I'm I think I'm right at the cusp of getting them working properly in Steam VR, and I will let you know as soon as that happens. Otherwise, you need to use the Meta Desktop if you want to get the really clear desktop version of this, or just use it native. And by the way, this this version will be going on to the SideQuest store, so you can load it straight off of SideQuest. Uh, you don't have to download it from the website anymore for the Quest native version. And we'll obviously be on the Quest store itself uh, at some point in the future also. Height, you can you can mess with your height here. Um, you know what, how that works. And the avatar is, is here. We can change things in the avatar. Um, so uh, that's basically it for the for the new features and, and everything. Generally speaking, this is mostly, a, um, I would say, a bug fix update, except it's a little more than that. I'm under the hood. I'm preparing for something massive. This next, uh, hopefully the next version will have my really cool thing that I, I've been dying to show you guys for months. Um, but anyway, uh, you can get the current version of this at glycon3d.com. And... Uh, uh, I, I hope you guys love this. Um, I've been getting some great comments, hearing some great stuff, and, and seeing some really good movies that you guys are putting out. I really appreciate seeing all that. So for more information, though, go to glycon3d.com and get yourself a copy. And uh, for members, it's, this version should be live today. Thanks. Have a great day.